In the previous chapter, we used a linear regression to predict future wine prices. However, there are many other methods you can use to do predictions. And the interdisciplinary field of machine learning has substantially advanced prediction method methods. Now, there, are, there are methods called random forests, gradient boosted trees, lasso and rich regressions, deep neural networks, and they often, though not always, substantially outperform linear regressions. And machine learning did not only develop these methods, but it also really established uh, some clear procedures how to tackle prediction problems. For example, you would typically split your sample into a training and a test data set, and you estimate your model on the training data set and assess the prediction accuracy on the test data set. And there's also a thing called hyperparameter tuning, for which you can use methods like cross-validation. And this we will um, look at in this chapter. So if you want to uh, dig a bit deeper and want to have a good textbook, you can start by taking a look at this textbook Introduction to Statistical Learning, which you can uh, download for free under this link. The main criterion to evaluate a machine learning prediction model is the so-called out-of-sample prediction accuracy. So that tells us how well the model is able to predict the dependent variable for new observations. And let us illustrate the trade-offs that affect this out-of-sample prediction accuracy with a simulated data set. And the data will be simulated with the following R function. So the function is called simData, it takes as an argument a number of observations n, and then it first generates a variable u, which is normally distributed with the mean zero and the standard deviation of 0.12. Then we have a variable x that is uniformly distributed between zero and 1.2. So I basically, I choose this number so that the graphs in the end look nice in the way I wanted them to look. Uh, and then we, we compute the true value of the dependent variable y, and it's a complicated uh, polynom of x. So it's actually, it depends up to x to the power 8. So it's actually an octic function or a polynom of the degree 8 of x plus this error term u. So let's use this function to generate first a small sample of 20 observations, which we call the training data set, which we use to estimate models. And we, we start with linear regression models, which are perfectly fine for predicting. And uh, later we will come to a uh, more complex machine learning model. In particular, we will discuss random forest. But here we estimate three different regression models. The first is just a linear model. Yeah, so we just explain why by a linear uh, function of x. The second one is a quadratic model. Yeah, so y can depend on x and on x squared. And the last one is an octic model. So it can depend, y can depend on x, x squared, and so on up to x to the power 8. And actually, we know that the true data generating process was this octic model. Okay. I will show you in the following plot how the three models fit the training data set. But first make a guess which of the three models fits the training data set best in the sense that the sum of squared of the residuals is the smallest. And we will look at this graphically only. 